Welcome to part two of this mini game list. I just realized my list is only from Mario Party 1 to 4. Oops. Yes! Alright, on to part two of this top ten mini game list. Wait, you haven't watched the first one yet. What is wrong with you? It's up there in the title. But you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna give you guys the benefit of the doubt, and I'm gonna give you three seconds to pause it. In three, two, I lie. Go! <laughs> oh yeah, you know we're jumping headfirst into the best with Aces High. Its concept is so simple, yet the amount of skill that can be put into this game is amazing. Now if you saw my last video, you'll know my opinion of Mario Party 3's minigames wasn't the highest. This was one of those exceptions. Based off of Shell Shock? Well, I think it is. The idea is simple, shoot your opponents and be the last player standing. But here they trimmed the excessive fat and made the pace so much faster, so no more inch inch inch. Shoot! Inch inch! Shoot! Hit invisible wall! Ouch! Now it's zoom! Pow pow! Ha! Fuck you! I hit you! Lock on missile! Fire! It was always a grand time with Aces High because it did exactly what a minigame is supposed to do. Breaking the pace of the slow board gameplay so things won't get stale. And the best part was, this one rarely ever ended in a draw. I don't know about you, but that's just aces in my book. Get it? Aces? Aces high? <laughs> Fuck you, not a lame put at all. <laughs> now here's a classic. Hot Bob Bomb was one of those mini games that could show you exactly what the other players' priorities were who they felt was their biggest competition as a whole of that round of Mario Party as they would target a player. The rules were simple. Catch and pass up a bomb and be the last character standing. If you wanted to be a prick, you could hold on to it until it was about to explode and pass it at the last second. The amount of aggravation the one that was on the receiving end would have with you is huge, although it was a double-edged sword. Hold on to it for too long and you just deemed yourself the biggest dum-dum for the rest of the night. Oh, this one's so easy. Consider me God. I shall dictate who wins and loses this game. And although I have already deemed myself that I will win, you may beg for who comes in second, third, and... Finish! Now why do I consider this one of the all-time greats? We have seen this game a total of three times over the years. It first appeared in Mario Party 1, then Mario Party 2, and years later we saw it return for Mario Party 7. And although the rules have changed slightly over the years, the core was always there and always resulted in good fun and pissed off moments. Now this one keeps you on constant edge as you walk down to push your button as you pray the chain chomp doesn't get you. Not to mention the fact that it's a race to the finish. This is a game where the pressure is always on because you know you have to make a choice. Either you're going to play it safe and hope your opponents mess up, or hope you have the reflexes to let go the second that demon wakes up from its slumber as you speed through this game. The risk is high, but knowing you just pulled off an awesome run, or knowing that you're the final player left and you can take your time, there's always a sense of accomplishment and giddiness if you win because you know you just bested one of the Mushroom Kingdom's most terrifying monsters. Speaking of chain chomps, why the hell do we need zombies when we have these demented creatures who have created nightmares and skid marks for many? Honestly, for a creature that creates so much tension and fear if it's not an ally in most, if not all of its appearances, could you imagine a game with dark corridors and then you hear the in the distance? And as you look into the darkness, you spot those glowing big eyes charging at you. I think I just skid marked just thinking about it. You know, I love minigames where you have complete control over your character. No gimmicks, no weird cautions that limit what you can do, just simple control. And Teen Treasure Trek benefits from it so much. You and a partner have to traverse the maze to find one of your colored boxes which hold a chest or a key. And after you both find one, you have to find each other to open it up for your reward. It's simple, and there's no bullshit like some of the other 2 vs 2 minigames where one could simply not understand how the game works, hoping or dreading you're with a computer, or the simple fact that one player may piggyback the other. There ain't none of that in this one. 
simply because it's simple. All you're doing is moving the joystick and trying to remember the best route to your box. Someone who's never touched a video game can be successful in Team Treasure Trek, and that's what makes this game shine in my opinion. If you win, it's because you were quick, nothing more and nothing less. If you lose, well, chances are it wasn't by much. Team Treasure Trek is a very user-friendly game, and it's just that much more fun because of it. Hell, it's so user-friendly my dog could win. I don't have a dog anymore. She was a German Shepherd and Black Lab mixed, and I loved her! Thought she was a boy when we first got her. Now you really gotta think about this one for a bit. What the fuck goes on in these developers' heads sometimes? Shock Drop and Roll has to be one of the most cruel torture device designs in existence. You're on a wheel, with electricity flowing under you, and you know it's not a matter of if you die, it's a matter of when. Because no matter how long you think you can keep up, sooner or later, endurance or a wrong move is going to be your end when you fall off and fry. But you know what else? This torture device is fun! This was one of those minigames where it didn't matter which side you were on, you were going to experience enjoyment at its best. Whether it was the ultimate test of your reflexes as you ran and jumped to stay on the spinning wheel, or you were playing the ultimate mind game as you try and predict what would slip up the competition. Whatever the outcome, I always had a grin on my face before and after because I knew I was about to play one of Mario Party's greatest challenges. Now, what is one thing that has been said about bumper balls? Uh, I don't know, um, I got fucked by balls as they banged me? Okay, pervertedness aside, I think it's a common rule that a top 10 usually has to mention this one. I don't think there's been another minigame that the developers put so much time into. It makes its debut in the first game, then there was an obstacle course version of it with three stages, and then it reappears in Mario Party 2 with three stages to play on. With that much dedication, you know Bumper Balls was their baby. And the controls were so perfect. Well, they had to be for the amount of precision and skill one to actually have to achieve victory. You had to be smarter. You had to outwit your opponent. And even though you may feel like you were on the ropes, you could always regain yourself as you fell through a crack and turn the match into your favor. And although chances are it ended in a draw, there wasn't a second where you had to be 100% focused and on your toes because one inch of a wrong move could be the deciding factor over victory. <laughs> you got fucked by balls. Oh my god, I'm a pig. You know, as I was browsing, there was one thing I noticed about Bowser's Big Blast. Most people hate this game simply because it's 100% luck based. Well, you know what? Too bad. That's right, I said it. Come at me with your negative comments. I will just do what any respectable person does and delete and block you. Yeah, that's right. But in all seriousness though, I personally think this one gets a bum rap. To me, I think the majority of people who don't like this minigame are the ones that usually dominate the minigames to begin with. So when a game like this comes along, the luck factor usually makes them shit bricks simply because they know it's anyone's game and they don't have an easy win. So yeah, maybe stop and think why we have minigames like Bowser's Big Blast. But this is a factor that always overshadows the qualities this game brings to the table. First off, it's a simple game. It's not hard to figure out and it's very easy to jump into. And then there's the tension of just picking a lever. Christ, the amount of sweat bullets this game has probably produced over the years is insane. Because it makes you hang in there for a little bit after you push one. Adding that much more pressure as you sit there and wait for your fate. Will you live to fight or have that big face blow up in your face? And although it's 100% luck, you couldn't ask for a more fair game than Bowser's Big Blast. Everyone has an equal chance to win here, and that's including computer players. You'd think they'd have the unfair advantage, but they don't. Something like that is unheard of. Let's look at it this way. Can Bowser's Big Blast be that bad if they brought it back for Mario Party 4? Sure, it's a battle minigame now, but what are the chances of you actually losing 50 coins? And even if you do, is it really gonna ruin your time with friends and family? Probably, you bitter motherfuckers. If I was to make a top 10 list when I was 10, chances are Hexagon Heat probably would have been number 1. I don't know why, but there's something about Mushroom Mixup and Hexagon Heat that stood out for me. Something I'm still trying to figure out. But as I grow older, I develop deep respect for its simplistic yet very surprising strategic gameplay of Simon Says. 
one will quickly learn that every little aspect will cause a ripple effect in how well you'll perform. It can determine whether you'll have a safe spot on the platform, if you'll be able to safely get to the next platform, or even get there to begin with. Something as simple as where you stand on the hexagon can determine whether or not your opponents will even survive. I'm sure you've seen it where two players have juggled one player or two to their doom, or a player hogging the edge to make sure they can't reach. And if you wanted, you could always be an asshole and ground pound on someone to pretty much guarantee they ain't making it to that platform. But be careful though, such an evil act could lead to your own fuck up. Now I will admit my childhood memories would probably gotten away with this one, but for whatever reason it'll always have a special place in my heart. Oh my god, I love Toadstool Titan. I personally think this was easily the best minigame Mario Party 3 had to offer, and it's such a nice nod to Super Mario Bros. roots. The goal here is to hit blocks to reveal a mushroom. Whoever grabs it first grows huge and tries to ram into the other players. I don't think there's another minigame that even comes close to the amount of franticness this game produces. From beginning to end, you're in a constant state of panic to find that mushroom, and even if you hit the right block, doesn't mean the fight is over. Somebody could easily steal it from you. But even when you do get it, that panic doesn't go away because you have maybe three attempts tops to flatten everyone else. If you don't, it's back to square one and try again. There had to be no greater feeling than grabbing that mushroom and in one shot you just smashed into all three players and sent them flying. I think for a lot of people, each Mario Party has that one game you want to play over and over. For me, Toadstool Titan is easily that minigame for Mario Party 3. There's been so many great and awesome minigames over the years, but what happens when you combine some of the most memorable games together? Dungeon Duos happens. There is absolutely no question that Dungeon Duos is my favorite minigame ever. It's like a celebration of Mario Party minigames. It's like they took the best ideas and turned it into something beyond amazing. And in the process, made something that actually felt like a Mario game at the same time. I'm like ready to tear up now. It's... It's just so perfect. You start off this beautiful obstacle course by running to a lever and button mash to open up the door for your partner, and vice versa. After that, you begin to take turns turning the platform for your partner to jump on so they can do the same for you. As both of you reach the next phase, soon after you must jump into pipes and find the right one so you can get to the next set of pipes. After that, you begin to start the classic air pump minigame portion where the both of you have to make your balloon rise. Whichever team accomplishes all this first is the winner, and if that wasn't enough, there's a high score aspect just to sweeten an already sweet deal. I can't tell you how many hours I had sunk into this minigame alone. Just trying to beat my best time was an addiction. At one point, friends, family, and I would turn on Mario Party 4 just for this game. In my opinion, this is the minigame that shows the greatest aspects about why we love Mario Party, and why the series is worthy of having some of the best memories for all of us. And since I don't know how to end this video, here's my dog again. That brain working. There we go! Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you did actually miss last week's episode, well, here's the link right here. Told you I didn't lie about it. Wait. No, I did lie. I lied about pausing it for you.